Welcome to this tutorial. This one is all about how to make the game Snake. And if you haven't played before, let me just share how it works. Press the green flag to start. And this is the snake that goes around the screen. Try and munch on all those little fruit. You can see I'm not very good at this. And as he goes around the screen, he's getting bigger and eating the fruit. But then if he touches the edge of the screen, game over and there's your score. So this is the one that we're going to play today and let's get started. Let me show you how to do it. Um, what we need to do first of all is delete Scratch the Cat and we need to paint the snake, the snake's head actually. So he needs to be pretty small to start with. So I'm going to zoom into those crosshairs and convert to bitmap and the square and we'll choose the colour that we're going to start with. Uh, you can choose any that you like. I'll stick with the purple. I don't mind purple. And then draw the snake's head. And the next thing I'll use the paintbrush and choose a darker colour because I'm going to give him his eyes. Um, I might make the eyes a little bit bigger. Let's say three. And we'll have one eye there and one over here. And zoom in a little bit closer because I'm going to do his forked tongue. And then just come out a little bit and then the the two ends for the fork. How's that looking? Ooh, a little bit small. A hundred. I might change that to a hundred and fifty. Yes, I can see his eyes, I can see his fork tongue. Let's give him a name, Snake. Um, and let's sort him out with the movement. So we need to move him around the screen with the arrow keys. So the first thing we need is an event. When the green flag is clicked, we want to say forever. If, whoops, if we use the right arrow, the left arrow, the up and the down. So we need four of those blocks, one for each of the keys. And then we need to go to the sensing because we're going to say if we press the up, if we press the down, if we press the right and if we press the left. So let's just do those. And those are all our arrow keys almost set up. All we need to do now is just tell them the um, snake in which direction to go. So a motion and we need a point in the direction for each of these. Now if we're going up, just look at this, really handy and this is in scratch three, we can just point that arrow in the right direction. With the previous versions of scratch we'd have to type in the number so you'd have to know what number to type in there. But with this version of Scratch, can you see the number changes automatically for you as you move the arrow? So the up arrow is pressed, we're going to go in the direction of zero, and when the down arrow is pressed, it's going to be 180. There you go for down, and for the left, oops, for the right arrow, let's make sure we get these right. The right arrow is going to go 90 degrees, and the left arrow is going to go minus 90 or negative 90. There we go. Now we just need to tell the snake um, how fast to go. So we want to move, move, not 10 steps, but let's call it speed. So I'll set a new variable called speed. Okay. And we don't want it to move 10 steps. We'll move speed. There we go. So that's fine. The other thing we need to do is say to the snake, we want you to start in the middle. So when we press the green flag, every time we have a new game, the snake is going to start in the middle. Um, so we need a motion and we need go to, pop that right up at the top, the X and the Y position right in the middle is zero, zero. So zero, zero. So when the green flag's clicked, go to the zero, zero position and then forever use these keys to move and set the speed. And the last thing we need to do is get another couple of variables. Um, we need a new variable called clone. B 
because we want the snake to grow as we're playing this. So set the clone to, well let's start it pretty slowly. We could have 0 0.3, 0 0.2. You can play around with that. Have a go with that and see how quickly you want him to grow. And then we need to set the speed. So bring this one over and set the speed to Oh, let's say 5. Again, we can always change that later if we like. So, let's give him a go. Alright, he's moving around the screen. Okay, happy with that. The next thing we need to do <coughs> is when the green flag is clicked, so let's have events, when the green flag is clicked, forever create a clone of myself. So where are we? Create a clone, here we go. Whenever the green flag is clicked forever, create a clone of myself. And then when I start as a clone, we're going to wait for, and I'm just going to put clone in there, wait for a clone and then Control, delete this clone. All right, let's try that. All right, a little bit bigger now. All right, let's stop there. Now we need him to be able to munch on some food. So go down and get a new sprite, convert to bitmap, and we will have, let's choose another color for this one. Again, any colour that you like. We could have, oops, we could have a green, yellow, orange, red, maybe a nice bright red for, what do you think, an apple or a cherry. You can make the food anything you like. You can have a banana, you could have a kiwi fruit, anything you like. So I will have, should I make a circle? I could do it with a paintbrush. Either option is good. I might just zoom in. In fact, I will. I'll use a circle and make it that sort of size. Just move it over a little bit. Um, now I'll use the paintbrush. What should I have? A cherry or an apple? Make it green. A little stalk. A little leaf. You can even colour that leaf in. There we go. And again, if you like, you can make that a little bit larger if you like. I'm happy with that size. In fact, I'm not too happy with the leaf, but then again, that's okay. Let's code this one. So what we need to do first of all, when the green flag is clicked, when the green flag is clicked, go to a random position because we don't want the, um, the, the food to be in the same spot all the time. In fact, I'll just name that food. Um, but we don't want the food to be showing up in the same spot and as the snake comes and munches on it we want the food to appear somewhere else in a random position. So when the green flag is clicked go to a random position and then forever if we're touching the snake so sensing if oh we need an if then first if we are touching the snake if we're touching the snake, then go to another random position. So let's get this one and we can oops, oh, come away. Um, we can duplicate that one. So control and click, duplicate, and then just pop that one inside. These just snap together again. Go to a random position and then change the clone. That's variable. Change the clone by and you can change that to whatever you like. I'm just going to put 0 0.1 and see how that changes. There we go. <laughs> so the next step is to set up the snake so that if he touches the edge of the screen, it's game over. So we need to head over to the snake again, select him and we need to say when the green flag is clicked, 
So when the green flag is clicked, then forever, if we are touching, so if then, if we are touching, and it's if we are touching the edge of the screen, then we're going to set the speed to zero. So down to variables, we've already set the variable speed, so sp set the speed to zero, and then broadcast And we're going to broadcast the message. We need a new message that says game over. Game over. Um, Alright, so when the green flags click forever, if we're touching the edge, set the speed to zero and broadcast game over. The other thing we could do is have a little bit of fun with the colour of the snake. So let's have a go with that. So we're going to say when the green flag is clicked, we really are getting very busy in here, lots of code. When the green flag is clicked, then forever, forever change the color effect. So it's going to be in looks, change the color effect by, at the moment it's 25, you could tw try 25 and fact, let's have a look. Ooh, a pretty jazzy snake. Yep, what happens if we change that number? What happens if we change it down to 15? Let's try that. Oh, still a jazzy snake. Let's try a different number again. Let's try, what about 10? Oh, I think I like that one the best. But you can choose. I'm happy with that, that's 10. All right, so when the green flag is clicked forever, change the color effect by 10. Um, but what happens if he touches the edge of the screen? We have the game over. What we need to do now is have a new sprite for the game over screen. So new sprite, um, convert to bitmap, and what color, I think I might go with the yellow screen. This is my uh, game over screen now. Let's code this one. So when the green flag is clicked, events, um, we're going to hide this because when we're playing the game, we don't want it to show. So when the green flag is clicked, hide. But then we want to set the brightness to 100. And then when I receive game over, when I receive game over, what's going to happen? Well, first of all, I need to show. When I receive game over, I'm going to show and then repeat 10 times. I want it to just fade. Repeat 10 times, looks and change. ghost down at the bottom there by minus 10. All right. What I want to do next is finish off this game over screen. So come down to choose a new sprite to the paint and we're going to type in game over. So choose the color that's a good contrast for that game over background and I'll choose the green and just type in game over. Choose the font that you would like. I'm going to stick with the pixel and change the size, not too big. Change the size and that's about right. Let's just code this part now. Nearly finished. When the green flag is clicked, when the green flag is clicked, we don't want the game over screen to be showing. So we want it first of all to hide. Um, and then actually, let's set up a scoring system while we're here. So make a new variable and we'll call it score. And we want to set the score to zero at the beginning of the game. So set the score to zero and also at the beginning, hide the score. We don't want the score to show. At the moment, you can see we have the speed, the clone and the score all showing, but this will hide the score 
um, and if you want the cloned and the speed to be hiding you could set it up like this but an easier way is just to untick those boxes the other thing we need is when I receive game over then I want that variable to show only when we receive game over and at that stage show the score so show the variable called score and if you like you can untick those and I think I will I'll take those off and I'll just leave the score ticked and the last thing I'm going to do is say when the green flag is clicked the other thing I want to do forever is set the score set the score to and this is where we need an operator the multiplication operator that one there set the score to whatever the clone is whatever clone you've reached so how far in the game you've reached and then multiply that by well how generous are you going to be do you want to just give them low scores whoever plays the game or high scores um, I might say multiply it by a hundred that's a pretty high score let's pop that one in there let's give this a try oh I missed but my score oh goodness that's pretty high 2790 let's give that another try if I can keep on going a little bit longer Maybe I can get some more of those cherries. Ooh, I went back on myself. Oh, that's very strange. What happened there? Game over. <laughs> oh dear, I don't know what happened there. All right, so there's your snake game. In fact, what I could do, I might bring that score just underneath here. Let's give it one more tie. try. Okay, you get the idea. All right, good luck with your game. I hope you enjoy playing the snake. All right, see you next time. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe, leave a like, and if you have any questions or comments at all, leave them in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, that's all for now. Bye.